we may as well get started. Um, I know Jordan particularly wanted to join us for the, for the CAI presentation, so we can we can do the first things on the agenda. Guys, we're getting started. Jan, John, we're starting. Hi, we're calling the meeting to order. Oh, okay. Don't shut up. Don't make us put it back. Our own really planning commission over there. It's so hard to control. We're busy. Okay, so um, first order of business is to approve three sets of minutes. I would like to ask with our one from, I believe the 16th, was that our one with the East Montpelier Fire Department? Uh, 16th. Yes. Yes. If we could just, because there wasn't total agreement, I was a disagreement, if we could just couch it majority agreement or majority consensus or something. And where are you now? You're the 16th. So just that, you know, with taking the 15,000, oh, no, pulling actually, it from them, I, I think so it's the fifth, First of all, it's the 15th, to be clear. Oh, the East Bob, thank you. So and, and secondly, the um, there were two drafts, and Rose had sent some clarifying um, comments, which Kari said were fine, and I looked at them and I thought they were great. Um, so let's figure out where you're talking about. Okay, let me go get in there. So you're talking about where? Just um, very towards the bottom, at least the version that I read. Oh, the last paragraph. Said, said that there was agreement and just. There was agreement and Callis will reduce its proposal. Well, we didn't take a vote, but you want it, you want it recorded. Majority you, agreement. It doesn't even have to specify that okay. I disagree by myself. So we could say, like, Car, are you with us there? Uh, yeah, I can make the change. Um, it, it, probably the, the last sentence of the second to last paragraph, the majority agreed that okay. Callis will. Yeah. Okay. That look. Yep. Others are fine. Okay. Anything else on any of the three sets of minutes? Can we move them all at once? Is that okay? Anybody object to that? Will somebody please do so? So moved. So we're moving all three sets of minutes for January 8th, 15th, and uh, 4th. 15th and 16th. Okay, who, I'm sorry, who moved? Uh, Donnie moved. I'll second. And, and seconded. Second. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 So, unanimous. Uh, board orders? Kari, you have? There are three going around. There's um, the payroll and payroll tax from the 12th and the that's AP. The, that's the only one that was on our um, no, there was a second. Oh, I missed it because I did have a quick. There were there were two as of Friday, and then a third was added today. Um, oh, I missed that. Okay. Uh, and the third is the AP um, right. counts payable. Okay. Which does, so does anybody have any questions? I have a question. Comments? So it appeared that there was a payment for the Curtis Pond Dam Association. Now is that money currently being held by the town, or is that? That, I, I believe that's the annual appropriation that was uh, approved at town meeting last year. Right. It was approved at town meeting for the handrail at the... Oh, that was the handrail. That was the handrail. Okay. So the CPA fronted the money, and this is reimbursing for okay. that. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. <clears throat> Anything else? Any other questions, comments on the uh, board orders? Then I'll take a motion to approve and sign them. Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> we don't have Jordan yes. here. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I move that we approve and sign the board orders. Do I have a second? I second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, and you're sending those around, Kari? So yeah, we're going around. Yeah. Oh, Donnie's got I was just putting okay. that around there. Okay. Um, resolution establishing. Is that next? No, sorry. Rules of procedure. Kari put in You've already approved those. We just need your signature. We just need to sign them. Okay, so, so you're I'll, I'll that. skip Donnie and go right to Anna. And we, but yeah, Kari made the, the changes that we approved, yeah. so we're all set. Great. Uh, resolution for purchase of the road grader. You all I have, had a, I have copies if anybody needs a copy of the resolution. I take one. I read it. Okay. And this is what we need to do in order to um, float, to issue the bond. This is the so. first step in the bond vote. The uh, attorney drafted this. It, 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 like what you did with the boom mower, it formally establishes the need that you as a board see that there's a need to raise money for this piece of equipment. Okay. Um, 
Um, so we all have to sign this. So what do we need? We need a motion to approve and sign. Is that yes. right? I would make a motion, motion that we approve and sign the Oh, I'm doing looking at the rules of procedure. Resolution. So the, uh, resolution. What's the title of it. Greater resolution. The road grader project bond vote warning. Do we have a second? Not a second. Okay. Um, <laughs> any discussion on that? Questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. This copy doesn't have signature lines. I think it only needs to be recorded in the okay. minutes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That, that's okay. Right. It doesn't that's have right. to be signed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Moving right along, the state equalization study. Ugh. Yeah, that's pretty bad news. Um, so although does that I mean that everything goes up twenty-seven percent. I obviously have such a hard time understanding. It means all let's real see. estate. Mumbo okay, Kari, back me up. Um, catch me when I say this. If I say this incorrectly. So this is only the education grant list. It's for purposes of state and I presume Washington County tax rates as well. I mean, formally we just taxed ourselves based on our own grant list, but now that we're part of, what do you call it, the Washington Central, Central Supervising yeah, sure. Supervisor Union, right. now they have but to it's equalize. Each so, town has its own cotton level of approval. That's right, so, but uh, we didn't use to equal the purposes it's of that. It's essentially case. a true up, so the, uh, the state is estimating what your, the value of your actual grand list is they in between the, appraisals, uh, right? The, the imaginary. <laughs> well, no, they do that by looking at what properties actually are selling for or have sold for in yes. Dallas. But again, it's an uh, inflated, you know, if they're selling for way more than they were right. two years ago. Yes, but, but I think we have to assume that's probably that's happening in almost all the, uh, if oh, no, all that's the happening towns in Vermont. Yeah, that's right. But the idea is that we're all playing on an equal field, so one town isn't low-balling, and therefore... Is there any audio available? Oh, my gosh. Oh, we're muted, Kari. <laughs> <laughs> You hear us Sorry, now, Scott? Scott? Can you hear? Yes. yes. Now I hear you. Thank you. That's what Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry, Scott. Thanks for, for catching us on that. Thanks for doing it. All right. And so it turns out that in the last year, our property sold for 27% more than we were actually appraising them for. Um, and therefore, we're going to be adjusting the grand list by that amount, or at least the education portions of the grand list, um, so that if your property is worth, just to round out, let's say your property is worth $100, you, or we listed you as $100, you'll be paying taxes on $127 for that. That's because it was sold that way. It's the ratio right. of what was sold That's right. to what our That's right. appraisal was. Ratio that they up. Yeah, and so that's a very high level, uh, that's a very high difference, but I think it's happening all over. In fact, Kari, I think you told me it's worse in some other towns, isn't it? Yeah, so the budget that the school board approved last week will have Calus' uh, tax rates going up 16%. Uh, oh. Berlin's is going up 25%. Oh. East Montpelier, 24 And that's if the cap that was put in place holds. Um, the legislature put a cap on tax rates. Yeah, but they might change that because everyone's they may have to change jumping way over it because they're like, free money, we're capped at 5%, yeah. so let's all build a new building and stuff. Okay, so that's just for your information. Anybody? Your painful, painful information. <laughs> or, yeah, anybody have anything to add or say? Or, yeah, okay. Um, Next, we have the mileage certificate, which was in your folders. So this is, um, we have to do this every year. How many, how many miles of class one, two, and three roads, uh, and four, we have in town for purposes of state aid. They give different amounts for the different classes, including none for class four. And you'll notice that because of the little change we made over at the intersection of George and Leonard Road, you'll all remember that one. <laughs> Vividly. <laughs> um, the, the amount of class four road has gone down by 0.08% and the amount of, I'm sorry, gone up. And the amount of class three road has gone down, gone 
down by 0.29. So we'll get a tiny little bit of less of state aid. Any questions or comments or on that one? So you need to approve this one. Oh, me. do we have to approve and it? And then sign it, actually. I have the letter here. Oh, the letter that you're talking about, the next item. The certificate, I'm sorry. We have to sign the certificate? Yeah, and T and has to sign it as well. We all have to sign this. Okay, so will somebody uh, move to sign this certificate of mileage? Uh, that, to, that we should um, uh, accept and, uh, and sign this certificate of mileage? So moved. Okay, second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. That's done. And finally, we have, well, we've got a lot of administrative stuff this time. We have a letter from the, um, for the Agency of Transportation, because it turned out that the, the uh, culvert over here was going to cost. Um, this is Loose Road, actually. Though. This is Loose Road. I beg your pardon. It was a grant that was obtained yeah. in maybe 2021 that we were, were not able to follow through on. And so it expired at the end of the calendar year. Uh, we're just formally withdrawing it. We'll we'll reapply it. and okay. hopefully get um, money and be able to do that project either in this calendar year or next. So I need a motion Agreed. to authorize me to sign and uh, to sign this letter. Somebody, I authorize and to sign the letter. No, you move to authorize me. <laughs> <laughs> so moved. Is that can I go second? Down? Path of least resistance. You may. Thank you. <laughs> and Jamie seconded. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks. And hand that to Kari. Yep. Thanks. There you go, sir. Okay. Public comment. Does anybody have anything that's not on the agenda that they wish to comment on or talk about? Barbara. I will. So I just want to let you all know officially. Uh, that there were no petition requests to put any articles on the warning. So your warning is as it has been presented to you, and you don't have to worry about any other articles from the public. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Okay. I think we're ready for Franco Rossi. Franco, you are, I don't, you're president of CAI Technologies, and you're going to be showing us the map that's going to um, give us all kinds of powerful tools for figuring things out that you're going to tell us about. Is that? <clears throat> that's the plan. <laughs> OK. What? Take it away. OK. I'll share my screen uh, first so that everybody can see. While he's sharing, could I just make some background information here? Yeah. Please do. Uh, we currently have an interactive map, which is on our website, which is taken care of by the Planning Commission Regional in Chittenden County, and we have to go, John has to go through the regional uh, central into Chittenden in order to get anything done, and every time we want, have wanted in the past to do anything different, it, we can't get it done. So um, John saw this, and this is where we would really, the town would like to go. I should get rid of the we, because I'm not working it anymore. But anyway. So, Jen, does that mean every time you want to update it, like if it changes hands or there's some change to the boundaries, you have to go through this cumbersome process? Is mm -hmm. that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. And this would make that easier? Mm -hmm. I'll add that for whatever reason, <clears throat> some from our regional planning has a sense of their, they can do so many hours of work because we pay them so much. Um, and the last, at least the last time I, I talked to them, they said, sorry, we were already over our central Vermont regional planning budget, so they'll take care of those map changes next year. It's gotten to the point now where our online map has data in it that's like two and a half or three years old. I mean, it's just, it's actually kind of embarrassing. Thank you. Franco, you ready? I am ready. Okay. I want to respect your time. I know time is limited. Uh, I, I can dive in and start showing what the application is and, and talk about what we're, what we're doing here. 
or I can start with questions if anybody is already has questions already. Would you like me to just dive in or? Does anybody have any burning questions they want to ask to start? I think okay. diving yeah, in is right. Right. first. So I will dive in and uh, show you. First of all, this is an online, uh, a web-based GIS uh, service that we provide to, oh, uh, uh, over 500 local and regional governments, including 71 in Vermont. Uh, I'm going to uh, go to East Montpelier to start just because it's close by, uh, and, but I can jump around based on questions and other, thing, other things you might want to see because different uh, municipalities use the application differently. GIS is simply map data that's linked to attribute data. Usually you start with your, um, your camera, your assessment data. Okay? <clears throat> but any database can be linked to it. Okay, so um, so this is web-based. You can you, you, as long as you have internet access, you have access to this to these data, and these are all data the town have. Uh, you're currently being maintained by uh, Nemerick. Nemerick's maintaining your maps. No, 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 Christine. Yeah, Christine Chamberlain's maintaining your maps. The so the. Right, so the process would be, Christine would provide the data to us, we put it online, link the databases, uh, the, the camera data, and then whenever she does updating for you, get it to us and we refresh it, okay? That's updating the parcel data. The ownership information, you have complete control of the, over that locally. So when you make changes to your assessment data, uh, you, you, uh, you have a data processor, run the data processor, and you update the web with the correct ownership information. So if you're doing a butters list in the middle of the year, you always have current information, okay? So uh, that having been said, again, it's very brief. Again, I'm trying to respect your time, but I'm gonna dive in and just show you the application. Well, you've got till seven o'clock, so you're- Okay, well, we're ahead right. of schedule. Okay. Yes, we're ahead of schedule. Right. Well, I'll, 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 uh, I'll <laughs> I'll get as in-depth as I think. I want to give you time to ask questions. Yeah. And please ask as we go. It's, 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 a, it's a lot more effective when it's interactive and, and answering questions. Question. Oh, how do you set up the backend people being able to update the parcel information themselves? The ownership information? Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, it, it really usually sits in one place. So wherever the camera is being maintained, whoever's doing that, that's where the typically the what we call the data processor is installed. We do a remote installation of that, and essentially what you, what's done is uh, uh, when changes are made to the camera, you run this uh, pre-established extract, place it where the GIS can see it, and then run the data processor, and it goes and anything that's new it updates that's on just the web. An automated tool. We can automate it to run automatically or run it whenever you choose to run it. This is our webmaster, Sarah okay. Black. I'm a GIS person. Okay, well, you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna bury me real fast. So, so go easy on me, right? Still, like, how you do the back end of it. Yeah. And, uh, in case people want to know what CAMA is, CAMA is the, it, it's the data collection part of the listers work of all the processing information that tells you whether you have 10 faucets versus whatever. <laughs> so I mean, it's the detailed data that goes mm -hmm. into uh, making the appraisal. Okay, so I'm going to dive in. First thing we're going to do, I've got East Montpelier opened here. We're going to dive in and look at, uh, this is all public information. We're live on their site right now. Nothing's canned. I apologize in advance for what's, <laughs> for something that doesn't, like, that they, data they may not have. Um, okay, so, uh, I, unless you want to go to a specific site, I'll, I'll normally put in Smith because that probably exists everywhere. So I'm, you can you can search by owner's name, you can search by address, and you can search by parcel ID. Okay. So let's just say I was looking for this one. So you'll see. You will see. <laughs> Here we go. There we go. Okay. I, I just randomly selected that that lot. It zooms to the parcel in question that's highlighted. And you see here is the information coming from your cam, from the camera, uh, the assessment data. 
Now, this can be can consist of everything that's in your camera or just the field you choose to, to, to display. Uh, and that's established when we set the site up for you initially, okay? Um, you see there's a, the CAI property card. Now, they don't really use this much, so you'll see it's very spartan. There's, there's really no information there. Um, they actually use the NIMRIC web data property card. I don't know, do you use the web data? So we have a link right there. It goes, opens, you can see it opens, goes right to the NIMRIC uh, site and opens that record for their property record card, okay? So if you're using their web service, you can do uh, that as well. But we don't yet. You don't yet, okay. So let me show you a solution someone else uses. Um, let's see. I've got to change the screen that I'm sharing. Let's go to Highgate. Okay, so this is Highgate. Again, I'm just arbitrarily selecting a parcel, and you see they have other documents linked. Uh, they've got the actual, because they don't use Memrick's web service, they create PDFs of their property record cards, and they link the actual property record card, okay? And a lot of communities like that better because what you're getting is the same card you'd get if you came into the office to get it. The idea does not have to come to the office. The data are the same. I mean, uh, most, a lot of towns are going to the web solution anyways, because it's easier to maintain. Uh, you'll notice they also, they happen to have their tax bills uh, linked as well. So, uh, and, I, and I point that out because you can link any documents you want to this. As part of our initial proposal, uh, we included the document upload tool uh, that allows you to link whatever documents you want. So for example, again, I'm gonna jump to... And the listers can do that? We don't have to... That's correct. We don't have, if you have the property, if you have the document upload tool, you don't need to, uh, we don't have to do it. So I just jumped to Waterford, Vermont. So if I select that parcel, they actually link the surveys. Right. Right. So you can, you can see the actual survey. The document upload tool allows you to link whatever documents that you think are appropriate. Building permits, uh, uh, septic system approval, septic system, you know, whatever makes sense for your community, okay? Um, so now I'm gonna go back to, oops, I'm gonna go back to East Montpelier. I'm gonna find it. Okay, so, um, that's a simple find a parcel, right? Now I want to look at that parcel. I want to, I want to look at it with uh, data in the background. So over here, I've got all these base maps available to me. We're an Esri business partner, so all of this Esri imagery is available. The nice thing, uh, the, the primary nice thing about the Esri imagery is that you, you have this I button here that shows you exactly the date of that flight. That's the only imagery available to us that we know what the specific date of the flight is. There's local imagery, which is really the state imagery. However, if you had a project for which you had local imagery done, we, could, we would add that there. And then there's others where we put most of the Google imagery. I'm gonna go to the Google imagery because most people are used to looking at that. So now I'm looking at the parcel with the imagery in the background. Um, so you can see how parcels relate, how property lines relate to uh, physically, because uh, when you're looking at a map, you don't really know, it's hard to tell, is that accurate? Is, you know, do, is the line in the right place? This gives you a, a point of reference to do that. I'm gonna go back to the original base map and continue on with layers. So this is where all the layers are. Okay, so different towns have different layers. Uh, whatever is, is available, first of all, and, and, and you want on your site is what would be in your layers. Now, first of all, the property map data, of course, will be there, those property map layers. E911 points, those are all coming from E911. Um, all these layers that you, want, that you may or may not want, uh, floodplain, 
Let me just zoom out so we can find some floodplain. There we go. So now I'm looking at the at the parcels. I have a, a relationship between the parcels and the floodplain just with a click of a button. Easy to make uh, make more informed decisions uh, for all kinds of reasons. I can also use these very simple to use measure tools and say, all right, how much of this parcel is in fact in the floodplain? Now I'm not going to be very careful, so I'm just going to bang around. So now I can say, all right. 0.34 of that 0.44 acres is within the floodplain. Okay, very point and click. You don't have to know a thing about GIS. Just point and click, and you've got measure tools available to you with this. Franklin, have people use that to um, for flood insurance? But how, how does that kind of data used? Well. Uh, First of all, you have to keep in mind the accuracy of the FEMA data. Okay. Some, some communities have very accurate data, some don't. Okay. 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 But there, it's, used, it's really used for planning and you know, purposes and, and to show if there's a, is there something we need to, we need to be aware of to, to check out? You can't, you can't count on that floodplain line being right there, yeah. right? I can just comment that uh, through the state's uh, map, uh, parcel map, they can, you can do that overlay as well, and we use that to check when we're looking at purchasing properties. Really because, important. yeah, because that was very important to us. But I guess that relates to my question is, so there is a state parcel map, mm -hmm. and then each town has a parcel map, and so what you're talking about is a town parcel map where the town can decide what specific fields we want to display because I know that some of this functionality that you're showing is available on the state parcel map and I was just wondering what's the sort of yeah, coordination so between states the, there's, there's a significant amount of functionality here that's not with the state and that's intentional I think on the state's part uh, and but but uh, the real primary uh, difference is is the local control over the data itself so the town it's up it's as current as you want it to be right uh, a lot of our clients send us data throughout the year. Uh, when there's map changes, we push them straight to the web right away. Um, it, that can still be done. I know the town wants to continue to work with Christina I don't, um, Chamberlain. I don't see any reason why we couldn't uh, continue to, if, she, if you want changes done throughout the year, she would send us data periodically. But also the, the attribute information, the ownership information would be as current as you want it to be and more uh, robust. I have a couple questions. You kind of answered one of them already. What's the your turnaround time on updating things? Well, um, in in your case, I, I I can't talk about the mapping because we're, most of our clients we do the mapping as well, the, right. but and update the parcel data. Um, so it's whatever that turnaround from the time we receive the data to push it up there. Um, uh, in that case, it's usually a, with, within a few days, but it might be as much as two weeks, depending on the circumstances. Uh, our maps are done annually. Yeah, I was going to say, the parcel maps are done annually, or we try, it's tried to be done annually. Those parcel maps, when they're done, is what goes to the state. Now, during the course of the year, there's a lot of property transfers, and everything in the grand list gets changed with all these property transfers. That's the kind of thing we want to have immediately into here, because for billing and taxing, and tax bills and all that kind of stuff, that's the kind of immediacy we want. Um, I have, yeah. oh, Sorry, I have one more question. Is there any uh, limitation to the layers that you have or will pull in? No, the it's unlimited. Uh, you may find at some point you need to, they need to be grouped appropriate, otherwise it just gets lost. But you know, I see a lot of different layers up on, you know, it doesn't matter, as many as you, as you want. Uh, uh, to have, there's no difference. Further, if you want to add new layers, uh, there's no charge, if long, as long as the data exists, you build a map for the town and you want that layer added, there's no cost to add that layer to the site. So I presume you can use state level data like um, you know, the, the um, biological information, wildlife quarters and things yeah. like that. But then if we, let's say, have a DRB hearing and we bring in a biologist and we change the boundaries for our purposes, yeah. 
But the state won't be changing them. Yeah. <laughs> How does that work? Yeah, well, in, in most cases, in a case like that, like, there's some specific cases like that, and uh, I'm trying to think of the last one on the top, oh, Exeter, New Hampshire, they had, they had a soil scientist come and do a wetland study for them. We actually created two layers. One is the state layer, and one is the local layer. And, we, and I don't remember what they're named, but they're defined that way. Um, because if we don't, the next time the state the layers update, it's going to blow out what we did anyways. Yeah. We have the same thing here. There's a state wetland map, and we've got Calista Natural Resource Inventory. So we've got two different wetlands. Yeah. For yeah. the most part, they lie over each other well. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. That, that's, I think that's the only real reasonable approach to a situation like that where mm -hmm. we can't maintain the state data. <laughs> Oh, we could, but I don't think I want us to. <laughs> um, okay, so um, again, the layers, they're unlimited. This is what uh, East Montpelier happens to have. If we, if we want to go to other towns to see their sites, there'll be different layers uh, potentially available. Okay. So if I, you notice when I have this eye activated, I can hover over any parcel, and it gives me a quick s snapshot of the lot number, the address, and the ownership information. Okay. Um, so now let's say, okay, I, I found the parcel. That's the parcel I was looking for. Um, I want to do an abutters list. Okay. So I click here. It defaults to 100 feet, but 100. Uh, the abutters list is typically a. a Oh, I don't know. What is an abutters list here? Now, oftentimes, it's direct abutters. Mm -hmm. That's what we okay. do. Okay, so I'm going to put zero in because that will give you direct abutters, but it includes across the road. So now I say I use my add remove tool. I say I need to add this one. Do I click on it? I need to add that parcel. There we go. So now I've got all my abutters. I want to. I want to list. I can export that to Excel and manipulate it, or I can just print the PDF um, with the subject parcel and all the abutters. Mm -hmm. I can print mailing labels, and I can say start printing here because I've already started my sheet, <laughs> and I've got my mailing labels. And you're done with the abutters. You're making our zoning administrator really happy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's the value of being able to update the data throughout the year, the ownership information, right? So you have the current owner that you're sending that, that uh, any notices to. But again, point and click. It's as few, we, 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 we developed this to have as few clicks for functions as possible. Um, so that's, an abutters, that's the abutters tool, okay? Uh, I want to, if I can see if I can find one, if I select this parcel, <laughs> you notice I select that parcel and it says abutting properties. The owner has five other properties. Okay, so you'll notice they, it's highlighted the other five properties they own. So if I'm doing an abutters list on that, I want to do the abutters list on all of it. Right? So I use this tool up here and change my subject features to include all of these. Now I'm doing the abutters to all of those parcels. Mm. There we go. Okay, so now, so now I'm getting a complete list because they own multiple lots. In some towns, those are one lot. I don't, I'm not sure how yours are treated on your maps. And in some towns, like East Montpelier, those are they keep them as separate lots, even though they're assessed as one. The value of that is. If, the, if a lot, one of those lots sells, right. there's no map change. All they got to do is make the name change, and they can go. But yeah, in other words, there's been a subdivision, but no real... Exactly. Yeah. And, 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 and our GIS will be set up, uh, the intelligence will be set up in whatever manner you're treating your parcels. Okay. All right, oops. Well, I guess I just trashed what I was doing. Um, well, let's jump over then. Uh, any more questions on the layers before I... It might be fun to show them some, like, 
I don't know, uh, two or three layers just to, so they can see what's in under the land? Yeah. Or, or, or um, whatever people I don't want. know what's a protected lands map. Of course, I'm probably going to have to zoom out to find it. Oh, residential districts. Do you have residential districts for them? The zoning map? Yeah. Good. Okay. Um, zoning and flood. Uh -huh. It's hard to see because of so it's oh we can make that's a. By the way, if you have zoning on, it shows you what the the zones are. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, anyway, I don't. Know. You can play with this all you want. Yeah. That's that's fine. Thanks. I have a couple of questions, but they're not related to parcels and zoning. It's on a different level. Do you, are you going to go someplace else in a bit? Or Maybe you want to ask a question. Okay. That's where right. I So outside of all the work that these folks do related to tax maps and zoning and all, everything you've been talking about, my understanding from the first time that John and Jane, Jan brought this up for discussion there was a possibility of lots of functional use throughout town. So, for example, it could track where all of our culverts are throughout yeah. town, where the highway department. Sure. Um, it, it would the conservation commission could work with this to identify a map where all invasive species have been found. Yep. Um, it, it could be. Um, uh, we have a recreational trails system throughout town. That could be mapped here. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's correct. All of that is correct? Absolutely. There's, and there's a lot of the, those data already available, like culverts. I think the state's probably already done a lot of that. And in, in fact, you look here, there is a layer that's bridges and culverts. Okay. For so then all that brings out. me to my second question, which is, if we get this, does the town need to look at its budget hiring somebody to take to manage this because if uh, the listers or the planning commission whatever we are all these different entities that's not associated with what they do who does all this work yeah so and what's the going rate right for it well yeah well the, as far as managing the site that's part of our service the site the data that's uh, that's but we have to get all the information to you right so it, typically uh well the answer is no i don't not sure of any uh, Larger cities may have someone that that they do that, but usually it's in the course of the work they're doing anyways, right? So I want to sh show you an example of what I'm talking about. I'm going to jump to a different uh, site, uh, Heartland. So Heartland, Vermont has a staff site. Um, you see there's their layers. That's, that's their public layers right now. I'm going to log in as a staff user and you're gonna see their staff site fire up, okay? These are their staff layers, hydrants, culverts, conditions, et cetera. So they do doing work, they're doing work like um, uh, ditching. Where did I find it? There we go. See those red lines? So they've got their, they've got their, their uh, road crew out doing ditching on the sides of roads for one reason or another. They've also, uh, they've got road conditions here. For all their roads, I don't know how that was generated. That, they, there was a project they had done for some reason. Once they got the data together, they got it to us, and we put it up there for them. But this ditching stuff they're doing from time to time, they're actually maintaining that themselves. We created a ditching layer. They've got editing tools, and they, when they're whatever they're doing, they they map it themselves with these simple tools that we gave them. So now, the editing tools are not included in what I'm talking to you now. Harkins had this for a while and they're building upon it. But the, I guess I'm trying to get to your answer of usually those data are built, are, are added and built around projects that the town's already doing. So if the Conservation Commission was working on it, someone from the Conservation Commission would be responsible for simply giving your company the information that then your company applies it to the map. Correct. Well, Thank you. An example of what you're talking about. Pardon me? An example of what you're talking like about. Like if the Conservation Commission wanted this map to show where they have identified all different kinds of invasive species or the shade tree program or something. Or a common one is they go out with the GPS, if not the Conservation Commission necessarily, they go out with the GPS to GPS to trails and they want to put a trails map up. 
you know, that, that's, you know, just provide us the data and, and we'll Okay, thank you. Just to follow up on that, do towns usually set up a gatekeeper? I mean, we don't want anybody in town being able to call you and say, put this data in. Yeah, so uh, in some towns, there everything goes through maybe uh, planning or the listers or whatever the case may be. But in many towns, the, the, the listers call for one reason or the and planning zoning calls for another reason. We don't mess with each other's data. They want to... Planning only wants a layer added, and listers don't care. So it really is, is a, a kind of a local, uh, kind of a whatever works best for you. So from our perspective, if it, if it always came from one place, you know, it would be, it'd be safer from our perspective. But it's not, we don't have to work that Or we can provide you with a list of these five people are authorized yeah, to sure. make changes. Yeah, sure. Okay. okay. So by what I saw you do was there's some layers that are publicly available to anybody that goes onto the website, and then there's some layers which you have to have a town administrator log in to be able to see data that might be sensitive for, uh, that you don't want necessarily to share to the public, but it's useful correct. for town administrators, right? That's, that's correct. So uh, the proposal we provided includes setting up a staff site. That staff site includes uh, data that you can have that the public can't see, but also includes some functionality that uh, the public doesn't have. For example, if, if you want to use the document upload tool and start linking documents to parcels, you don't want that available to the public, because I can assure you, you wouldn't like what got linked up there. <laughs> so you need a staff site for, for, for that. Go ahead. So we have back one in the floods in July, um, we made a road closures map that's also Esri, you know, web app mm -hmm. stuff. Um, and that's just something that I put together and was updating. Is that something that you could absorb? Yes. So you're using RTS Online or are you using... I have Pro and then I push it. Yeah, okay. So if you provide us with it, like, we, we, can, we can access it. And important, and, and or but if if you want it as a layer that's permanently available, we need to get the data in it. But otherwise, you can add it on the fly, mm -hmm. and it just won't stay there, right? right. So if there was, because you know floods will happen again. So <laughs> if that road closures map is then ingested into that, and you know we're having to update road statuses every day, is that something that is actually feasible that you all could do on a quick turnaround time in an emergency? Yeah, sure, sure. Or even I mean, it's season. not something, right. Uh, right, it's not something you do every day, uh, right, yeah. every year, all year, but yeah, yeah. certainly in an emergency situation, we can. Yeah, during the floods, you know, I get like, you know, a text or email that's here's the roads today, and they have to go in. Yep, the yeah, we can definitely arrange to have that shoved up there whenever you, or again, you can have it there on the fly, mm -hmm. although that wouldn't be available to the public if you did it that way. So yeah, yeah, we want to get to us. But I'm thinking about mud season. What if we wanted to do it every year for a couple of weeks? Is that a couple of weeks? Well, you know, <laughs> you're starting to get into tools. If you had, for example, the, our editing tools, oh, the that's, that's an add-on. Uh -huh. But if you had our editing tools, we could set it up that you could maintain your um, mud season roads, whatever you want to call it, and, and, you, and you could edit it and change it and move it whenever you wanted with the editing tools. But then do you train somebody to be the editor? Yeah, it's, and they're simple to use tools. It's like I told you, like Heartland, where they do the right. ditching. So somebody in the town would have to would, be would, that's, that. Right, yeah. that's, that's one way of doing it. Yeah. The other way is, you know, sending us the data to update, so. Is that an expensive addition to the contract? Yeah, pretty expensive. Editing tool, well, Actually, with the new with the new uh, service, editing tools will be built. Problem? Do you have ArcGIS Online here? We do right now. Yeah. Yeah. So it won't be bad. It wouldn't be bad at all. Huh. You can do it in ArcGIS Online. Get us the data, and you're and you're, you're good to go. Do you need an um, organizational account for that, or can you do it with a free account? Need an organizational account. Another question. Back to the road. So I had had a question with like the East Montpelier Fire Department. Wishing that at some point, like we had had during the flood, but that it would be Callis and East Montpelier and Plainfield and Marshfield. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to partner? I don't know the other towns surrounding us. I'm guessing East Montpelier has you, but. Um, 
that there could be access to a larger, you know, like they yeah, the should being able to look at the the overall map and being able to this route's gonna be the fastest way to get to that fire. This yeah, route's so route's we do get. have one instance of uh, in New Hampshire where it's a tri-town site. So Sunapee, New London, and Newberry, New Hampshire. It's one site with all three towns. And you can search one town or you can search all three towns for data, et cetera. So the short answer to your question is yes, we can do it. The longer answer is number one, we'd have to be serving all the towns, which we're not. Mm -hmm. And two, uh, there'd be additional costs involved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah we don't like the answer to almost anything is yes in GIS. The question is, what's the cost? <laughs> so, but if East Montpelier gave us their login or agreed, then we could look at their staff site, you mean? Yeah, it's public. You can get into their public site any time, but the staff tools are inside. Them to get yeah. Them to yeah. So similarly, if I'm just online perusing the East Montpelier site and I'm looking at a property along the Callis border, and Callis has the service as well. Yeah, you have to open you, two you, sites. Would, you have to open a separate yeah. site. You unless can't you set, from unless one you to set up one of those tri town or dual town things, but again, yeah. there's additional costs involved with in that. Because you got to normalize it. There's additional costs. Right. And I got smart people that do it. <laughs> unless you want to, I can, I'll, I'll skip over that. Um, areas of interest, that's pretty simple. It's, there's just, uh, that, those are just shortcuts to specific areas. So if I want to go to the town office, I don't have to search for them. It takes me straight to the, the, that area of the town, okay? Uh, mm -hmm. okay? And I can use this back button to go back to where, where I was. Mm -hmm. um, Measure tool, I showed you quickly the measuring the area, but you can measure distance lengths as well. And so, you know. Oops. So if I want to measure in feet. Again, I'm not being careful, but oops. Um, draw, I can draw lines. So let me turn the base map on. So let's just say for talks, let me see if we can find a reasonable example. Oh, it doesn't matter. I'm making something up anyways. Let's just say for talks, sake, you're thinking about, they're thinking about selling this piece of land. So I'm going to draw a line here. Again, it's point and click. I'm going to draw a line from here to here. And then I'm going to say, OK, how much area is in that? And I can say, all right, I'm conveying well, 1.06 of that total acreage is what I'm, what I'm looking at. So you, come on, Jesus. Why isn't it closing up? Thank you. Um, so that, that tool allows you to draw lines, uh, polygons, you can create a point. Um, I can say, okay, I'm going to make this up because there's not even a brook here, but I'm going to say I want to put a point right here and I want to add some text right here. size of that text if I want. 
and I can uh, So you're putting in a, like a Just a no and then, then I can say that and I can, I can make that look better if I edit it and make it larger yeah. and then I can email I can print an email to my road agent or whatever to you know Cool. Clog culvert, yeah. whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm making stuff up here. I don't know how you would do. One of our clients used those tools. They had their sesquicentennial, uh, 250 years. They created a map uh, of points of interest and posted that map on their website and then posted it around town for the way the parade was going to be. So you can use it for all kinds of stuff. Historic trail. Um, ArcGIS Online, so you can import data from there. Uh, staff access, let me, uh, first let me get rid of. So I'm going to log into the staff site. So you see some tools came up, some layers came up. So they've got Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission sign in. So they got their sign inventory uh, that they've got from, from the Regional Planning Commission. Okay, uh, That's data that they have, but they also have these tools. So Camelot and GIS, this is a great tool to keep your data clean. What that essentially means is I'm going to run a report and I want to see what records do I have in my camera that aren't finding anything on the map to link to. There could be legitimate link errors, or it could be a typo, it could be all kinds of reasons they don't link, but, well, they've only got a handful of them. This, this is pretty clean data. And some of them may be legit, you know. Uh, so you're using it for a data correction? Yeah, identifying where there's, where there's errors in the data. And it could be a map error or it could be a uh, uh, camera error, but it helps you keep the data clean. Okay. Uh, analytics, so you can see how much traffic the site has received. Um, printing, I, I do want to definitely show you that. Uh, let, me, let me go back to my. Let me turn on zoning just so we have some different colors. Okay, so let's say I want to print that map. Uh, print. Um, I can just do a plain map, right? That's like taking that, taking a piece of paper, sticking it on a photocopier, and printing and, print, and copying it. It's just a dumb map, right? Or I can do a map layout. And I can say, all right, I want it to be one inch equals uh, 150 feet. That's a one hundred and fifty feet. I can, uh, I can if I have a black and white printer, I can put whatever title I want in it. I want to show a legend. And I'm going to leave it portrait. You notice down here the lock next to these measurements. When you have a staff site, you can actually print twenty four by thirty six or thirty six by forty eight. If you're on just the public site, you get letter or eleven by seventeen. I'm just going to leave it as letter right now. Print the map. Now it's going to take a little bit longer to print the map because it's creating a, a border and the north arrow and the legend and all that fun stuff. So now you'll see you've got a professional looking map. It's got a legend showing what those colors mean. Uh, it's got the title I just I stuck in there and the scale, etc. Okay. So you just fill out that form and you can you have a you know, you might do an abutters list and include a map of the abutters list in it. Whatever you want to do. I can email that to someone. Whatever. So it's a really robust uh, printing capabilities. Um, help. I can click on that and it's going to take me to this document that shows me, talk, tells me how to do things. Uh, I can't remember how to do an abutters list. I click on that and it takes me right to how to do the abutters list. I could print it out and do a hard copy, I can move that to another screen and have it with me, but that's a, it's a really useful help tool. So it's 
So, Franco, we've got about five minutes left. Is there anything else you're dying to show us? Um, I want to identify one more thing in, in particular, feedback. So right from the site, you have the ability to feed, give feedback to our support staff. If you're having a problem or a question or if something's wrong with the data or whatever it might be, you fill that out. You, you can identify who you are. You don't have to. And, uh, and put your note in there and send it. It goes straight to our support staff who are on top of it for you. Okay? Those are the highlights of what I wanted to show you. <laughs> Wow. Well, somebody's going to have a lot you of fun with it. a proposal in October? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I don't remember when. But. Yeah, I looked at it today. <laughs> so okay. it is, uh, is there changes now that it's January of 84? I mean, 2024, my <laughs> <Right>. God. January of 84? I'm back in college. Um, no, it's, no, it's all still good. OK. And Jan forwarded that proposal to us this afternoon, so I did post it to your Google folder. I don't know if any of you had a chance to see it this afternoon. If you didn't, it's in your Google folder tonight, Thank you. and you can go back and look at it. Okay. Uh, Sarah? There have, by, by the way, there has, the document upload tool, price, the annual price has increased to 750 but I'm going to honor the proposal I gave you, so I leave it at 500 um, The One other question I had, it's part of that, um, road condition thing that we set up, we also have a survey one, two, three that pulls in directly to that map. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you could support in your platform as well? So it's pulling in the attribute information from that? Yeah, it's uh, set up on the website so people can go to the road closures map and you know click on the link and go to submit a condition report here and it's set up. So it, you know they mark it on the map, give it a description, they can upload photos, and then it goes straight into the road condition map as a. Yeah, um, I want to say yes to that, but I, I, I'd have to confirm that with our technical staff if, if it will work straight through or if you have to get back to your, to your, uh, if you, I don't know if you can do that through the access site. I know we do it with, with our layers when we set up with the editing tools. Right, yeah. But I don't know the technical issues of going back the other direction when we consume the, mm -hmm. the data from you. Yeah, we set that up so that because at that point it was so chaotic and people could, you know, they're going down a road that hasn't necessarily been gone down yet. Yeah. They could mark something like, yeah. hey, there's a giant hole here. Yeah. And yeah. that way people didn't go mm. somewhere they shouldn't. Yeah, we, we've set things up where you can, the public can click on potholes or, okay. uh, you know, identify different features that they just want to keep maintained. Um, I don't know how it works going through back into yeah, your system. Yeah, really just that functionality. Yeah. Just the, being able to have like community yeah. markings of things without having to log Yeah, the functionality is there. I just can't promise you how it's going to happen. So what's the next step? We have not signed a contract with you. Is that right? The next step is is uh, you write me a check and I leave. <laughs> and you see me in 12 months. No. So once you've approved, if you if you want to go forward with it, the uh, I think I've already I included a contract I think in the when I sent you the proposal. Uh, so that's still good as far as I'm concerned. Uh, execute the contract and email it back to me, and then within I think 90 days I think I have. Oh wait, I'm looking at it right here. Don't. Let's see. Timing. So schedule is 90 days from receipt of a contract. The site would be up, password protected. So the first thing we do is uh, work with whoever your liaison is to get things, the details worked out of what layers are going to be there, that fun stuff. Get it set up, send you a, a link to it that's uh, email protected, I mean uh, password protected. You would set up your own access to it. And you can keep it password protected as long as you want. Typically, within 30 days, the town will have played with it enough to say, we want to change this, we want to change that, oh, we're good to go. And you let us know, and we'll take the password protection off mm -hmm. for the public-facing part of it. The staff site tools, obviously, will stay password protected. Mm -hmm. And you can assign uh, passwords, different passwords to different people you want, or usually it's a password for a department, but whatever you want to do. So that's the process. So who has the contract now? 
I don't know if there was a contract with it, Franco. I, I think I, there was. I've got a paper copy. Um, if there were, if, I, I can check, but I can I can forward one. I mean, I, I think I gave to them what I had, and I thought it was only a proposal, but maybe it, maybe the last page had a contract. I don't recall seeing anything that was detailed like yeah. a contract. I so yeah, I think not, Franco. You have my email address, yeah. Barbara, the select board admin, and I can get it right to. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll send it to. I'll I'll email you either way. I'll email you the contract. That would be great. Thanks. And then you'll need us to appoint a liaison who's going to work with you. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, that doesn't mean we can't talk to other people, but usually in the initial setup, it's easier to have things going for one, through one individual. Right. And is there a timeline by which we have to, you know, after which you would not honor that contract? Um, no. I mean, not really. Okay. It's months out. Yeah. Okay. Um, if, we'll, if you we'll have to, if you're then. waiting for for a town meeting for budget to pass, that's fine. If we're getting to next December, probably. We'll. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Other questions? Yes, Jake. So, with the uh, administrator login, are, is there different layers or uh, tools that can be available to different logins for different groups or permission level within the administration? Yes. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much, That's everyone. Thanks for your participation, and I appreciate yeah. the time. Any other questions come up, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, You've given us your card here, yeah. yeah. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Thanks. All right. I'll try to be as quiet as possible shutting down. Oh, yeah. it's okay. I see Gus isn't here, but Nick is, so maybe we could hop over to that for the next agenda item. Thank you, Franco. Thank you very much. Can we, uh, let's jump to the 7.30 item. That won't take very long, in which the Emergency Management Committee would like to be created as an official committee. Yes, and I guess that proposal is pretty self-explanatory. Um, there were that the group of people who are uh, listed as candidates to be appointed by the select board uh, to a committee were um, all confirms that they would like to to be on the committee, and they, um, and likewise with the initial length of term. Um, but of course, the select board can make recommendations or change that list as you see fit. Um, but yeah, the Vermont statute that's quoted there in the agenda item uh, not only encourages but directs the town to create uh, some kind of committee for emer uh, local emergency management. A, a local organization, which up to now has been you. Well, <laughs> and seven other people, yeah. Well, yes, but we only appointed you oh, officially. Yes. Right, yeah. and then uh, Betty Copeland uh, was appointed right. by the select board to represent uh, California Regional Emergency Management Committee, which is um, a collection of uh, a dozen right. municipalities. Right, okay. And I'd like to add to what Nick said that not only did everybody who was suggested tonight uh, nominated to be appointed gain permission, they've been actively participating for a long time. Denise Wheeler and Rick Keane especially have been serving with emergency management services for years, Betty for years, and others more recently. But for at least a year, everybody has been already working, which means meeting monthly and sometimes more often as needed. Do we need to go through what this is, or does everybody understand this? You all set? Yeah, that's a yes. We're all, you're good. You're good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Do I need to be? I just I saw I was on there. Do I need to be appointed? Uh, but I was thinking you probably don't. You can be our liaison any way you okay. want to do it. I just didn't know if that was customary or if I would. We can do it either way, okay. whatever you're comfortable with. And Nick, I also noticed there's a vacant one. You have somebody in mind for the vacant seat. Oh, yeah, that's that's the very early discussion, which I don't think we're there yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we have several people that we're going to kick around yeah. among committee members to discuss and decide. Okay. So I don't want to kick them if we want them to talk. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So if you, if you guys want to just keep her appointed as the select board for a liaison, that frees up two spaces. Do you want that many more people? I think there's other people that we talked about that would be that 
their particular brand of expertise would be incredibly useful to have on the board if they were amenable with joining. Okay. You are the our liaison. I am your liaison. Yeah. So do I need to be appointed too? Oh, I see. You know what I mean? Or am I? So, the, so I would say we would look to Nick to make this call because he, we're also concerned about, we don't want it to be so hard to group that meetings become unmanageable. So. Well, we thought 10 would be a, a good maximum number for appointed committee members. And uh, that everyone is welcome to participate in the public meeting. So, and we, we welcome. Uh, All right. Those. Well, it sounds like we can go ahead and take Anne off, and then you'll have two terms that you can fill if you would like. How about that? And I'll still be there, but yes. Great. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, can you create a, uh, can somebody um, move that we create a Callis Emergency Management Committee, um, which shall consist of 10 members, one of whom shall be the director, the Emergency Management Director, who shall be the chair. Um, and the purpose of the, um, Rose, we can work on this later. She, she has everything on your agenda. Yeah, has. why don't you just do oh, that? So I, it's I probably already have it here, thank yeah. you. Its purpose will be to carry out um, the, um, the statutory uh, directives of this um, law that's cited for state emergency or for local emergency management and we'll create the terms so you've all got it in front of you there <laughs> would somebody like to move that so move and, and and it can include that we're going to appoint the members and listed in this minus Ann Tulin, and we're going to leave yes. two positions so all the language in the agenda and to appoint the we're removing Ann Tulin, so appoint the eight members listed in the agenda. Okay. Does everybody understand the motion? <laughs> I was a little garbled there. Mm -hmm. Do we have a second? I'll second. We, Donnie second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah, there's a, three, four members of, here. I'm just curious, does the vacant position need a term listed? It, I think it does. Doesn't it have a term listed? They're listed. They're listed. Yeah, there's two vacant ones now. One is a two-year term ending in 26, and one is to be appointed. Oh, it doesn't have a term. It doesn't have a term. I see, yeah. Oh, thank, thank you. I thought it was then it, or, or two. Yeah, and um, well. At the time we do the appointment, we can sort yes. that out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. Okay, thank you. And uh, we will need to identify these as uh, numbered seats instead of by individual at some point so that there's no confusion uh, you know, now seat four is vacant rather than right. now so and so. Okay. All right. Thanks. And Gus is here now. Right there. Hi, Gus. Yeah. So we're going to um, talk about the warning, and you have a copy. Um, let me see. We're going to, you want to go through with us, um, correct me if I'm wrong, we're going to go through the articles and talk about who will move them. Or who wants to speak to them. Or and speak to them. Whatever. Yeah. Um, the League of Cities and Towns, we're moderators. Oh, yeah, we're going to You should always meet. It's like the moderator. Go ahead and meet. And I think it's mostly because sometimes the articles are not constructed well. And but I think you've gone through this with your legal counsel, the articles are being posted. Okay. So I, I think they're all in good shape, and I think they ask questions that people can't figure out what it is is being asked of them. So, uh, so the other thing I've usually done before is just to know who to call on to speak to various articles. And oh, you need to know that. Well, okay. It just makes the meeting go a little bit easier if I know you know, who's going to speak generally to, to the town's biggest article, or if you want somebody in particular to speak to highway questions, <coughs> or questions, or um, whatever. So, I, and you may know, and I don't, for instance, who the current rep is for the Kellogg Harvard Library, or if there's anybody who's going to be speaking to all the social service requests. Some years there's been a committee 
I don't know that there was one this We year. didn't do that this year. We should have because we were asked to at town meeting last year, but we kind of didn't catch that until it was too late. So we've got to remember to do that next year, do the committee. Yeah. Uh, do you need somebody to, one of us, to nominate you? Is that? Um, only if you want me to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's not a question. I just didn't know how it usually worked. One of us would. Usually, usually it's the chair. Usually it's the chair. Sure, I can do that. I'd be happy to do that. Should we go through these then together? Um, sure, so starting with Article 5, do any of you want to speak to that? This isn't just about your report in the town, it's all the reports, so people can ask about anything they want. But does anybody on the select board want to speak to your report in the town report? Or do you want to That's our, oh, you, you're, you don't have a current sure. copy, do you? Oh, wow. Sorry. The latest. The latest. We have the final review. We put the upgrade. Be sure to see, yeah. <laughs> So the, the, the Article 2 is now the town reports. Yeah. What do you mean, to answering questions, or are you saying we present the report? Um, that's up to you. you know, if, if you want it, if somebody wants to get up and say, in your report, we talked about the highlights of this year, and I just want to. I say the road crew, or I want to point out we did this or that. Okay. We don't do that for all the reports, though, do we? We don't do that for all the reports. No, I'm just, you don't need to, you don't need, you can just say, you guys have, you, the public, has the report if you have questions for us. But you can choose to highlight something if you want to. All right. And Anne, you'd like to do that. I would be comfortable doing that. Yeah. Okay. So. We will do the select date report. And then I think you were starting to talk about Article 4. Yeah. Oh, oh, to elect the following town officials from the floor, we're not going to make those no, motions, I'll, are I'll we? No, I'll run that election. So all I need, though, is to know who the incumbents are. Barbara can help well, you with that. So, and I need to tell you what I have said to both of them. They both want to run again. So I told them it's their responsibility to have someone there to nominate them. Is that correct? Yeah, usually what I do is say so-and-so is the incumbent and somebody should. Are there any nominations and somebody? Okay, perfect. Okay, okay, I'll give that to you. Okay. Okay. So who else speaks Article 4 or do you want to divide that up in some way? So the idea there would be to just um, talk about the highlights. I mean, we don't want to. You could, or you could just move the article again. It's up to you what, how much you want to say. It's Isn't a this the one we were talking about doing a, maybe a five minute presentation that would be practiced at the informational hearing? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Jordan, maybe? Yeah, I'm a little uncomfortable. Jordan never did join us. Oh, well, um, it's tradition to make him do it then. <laughs> <laughs> the idea, what, what Kari and I talked about is, is my talking a little bit about the process that we went through and then asking Jordan to speak to the highlights. So we would do that and that's, we would just do the general part of the budget. And then I was thinking maybe Donnie and Ann could think about doing the highway portion. Uh, either one of you or, or if you wanted to divide it up. Um, it, maybe one of you wants to take more of the capital stuff, for example. There's going to be a lot of talking about the capital highway budget. But, so we can come back to that, but that was my thought. Mm -hmm. Would you both be comfortable with yeah, that? Yeah. All right, we'll sort that out, the details of that a little bit later. I don't need to know that. You guys can arm wrestle a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. She'll win. I will. Uh -huh. So Article 5, oh, I, I assume Juanita would do that one. Would, wouldn't the Cemetery Commission be the one to move that? Yeah. Okay. okay. Library Services is, what's his name, Kari? You told me the other day. Jeff. 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 Jeff, that's it. Okay. You got that, Gus? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So Article 7, there's nobody to speak for. 
Well, is there much to say other than it's exactly the same as it was last year? If that's what there is to say, I can say that. Oh, okay. But you'll want one of us to move it, won't you? Well, this is the article that usually somebody... Yeah, you can move it. This, this is the article that usually draws, why is this, or can we take 50 bucks away from these guys? Right. We spend an hour on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so somebody actually has to be prepared then to deal with that. Yeah, this is the one where Doug Lee really wanted more on something. Well, are you talking about the, the, the social service? Yeah. I have an agenda for yeah. 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 me. Is this the social yeah. service? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, it didn't matter when we had it to me. Oh, and I think right. part of the reason the committee all quit was because oh, yeah. they made a recommendation and people still wanted to make a <laughs> yeah. Why are we spending all this time? <laughs> I remember that you're arguing about they, somebody wanted to add to the food shelf, and the food shelf said, no, we don't want any more. We gave it to them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, would anybody like to take responsibility for that piece? <laughs> I, mean, I certainly could. Okay. Just, just be prepared. Yeah, yeah. Just, okay. I was on the committee for a number of years. So why don't you, do you want to move that one? Sure. And, and speak, well, maybe you can just be prepared to answer questions yeah. you don't, without speaking to it. Okay. Now we come to, here's where Nick's going to help. We're on the reserve fund now. The, do you don't have it in front of you, Nick, or do you? The warning. I do not. Oh, okay. No, I mean, I have, I have the no okay, so Yeah, eight and nine. Yeah, yes. We'll have to speak to eight and nine. Yeah. And would that also be an appropriate time to steal two minutes to pitch some of the volunteer opportunities for things like um, sh the shelters, you know, overnight mm -hmm. shelter and... Sure. Um, yes, it would be very... Okay. okay. Yeah. There are a couple of things we would like to recruit folks to step in and do the training and be available for... Oh, great. Right. Great. So does Nick move those or do we move them and then he speaks to them? He can move them. Okay, so Nick can do those. Okay. All right. You'll sit on that one. Um, is it, that includes um, uh, creating this emergency, re this uh, reserve fund. And you understand what that is? And, yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, then we got a whole bunch of property tax ones. Yes, and you want to have one person do each of those? Or? That's what I was thinking, one person could take responsibility for that. Anybody? There's going to be, um, several of them will be completely non-controversial. Article 10, people pay in two equal installments. Article 11, they have various options. Article 12, the interest per month. But then we've got the delinquent tax penalty, which will be controversial, and we'll have some discussion. Is it uh, different than it was in the past? Years? It's set right now at 3%. We're going to propose going back to 8%, which it has been in the past. Would anybody like to take on those items? which would mean that that person would be speaking to the delinquent tax issue. Okay. I probably could. Would you like to? That'd be great. Sure. Okay. I'm, I'm happy to help prepare the, the tax one that's going to take a little while. That would be awesome. And jump in if there's a question. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah, Kari will be there to help us when we get to, when we stumble. <laughs> so. Okay, then we have several that have to do with the fire department, well, the two fire departments. Uh, James Daly will be there to help, and I imagine Al Petrella will be there too, mm -hmm. but somebody needs to take the lead on it. I don't mind. Yeah, that's what I figured. <laughs> I knew you'd want to do that. <laughs> I like the fire department. <laughs> that's a good service. I don't know. <laughs> so you're going to do both 14 and 15, 16. And I assume they're going to be speaking to it primarily, but... Okay, 16 and 17. Oh, and 17. That's okay, I can make a copy. I'm just going to write mine down, too. Okay, math. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
Now, Article 18 um, probably will not be controversial except for that last bit, because somebody will get up and say, no, we want you to do this every year. This is the one where we're going to ask that any fund balance that may be left, which there may not be at the end, uh, shall be rolled over into the, put into the highway fund. And then it adds a clause that says, and this will be a permanent thing. We'll do this every year. Anybody want to take that one on? If he's willing, this could match Jordan's comments on the budget pretty well. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Agreed. So let's assign that one to Jordan. I think people <laughs> try to set it up beforehand that we're trying to be very responsible and mindful with right. the highway activity. <clears throat> yeah. So that if there is money left over, it would be do their careful. Yeah. Can I ask a question about Article 16? Yeah. Uh, that, that's this the Woodbury fire, Volunteer Fire Department. It gets to be paid on July 1st, 2024. Isn't that the start of uh, the new financial? Uh, fiscal year 25, right? So Yes, it'll be paid out of the new budget. Out of the new budget, mm -hmm. immediately on July 1st. Yes. Apparently. <laughs> Lord, I'm sorry for you as treasurer. <laughs> 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 Speaking of that, Gus, when's the appropriate time to um, introduce Kari to everybody? Um, I could do it right at the beginning after the election for moderator. And you know, since since we sort of <coughs> talked about all this, we've we've now decided that Kari is going to be treasurer and road commissioner. And somebody, maybe Kari could talk about that. How we're maybe, maybe right at the beginning, we've never quite done this after the election for moderator. Each of you, since it's a whole new select board from a year ago, just introduce yourselves. Okay. We should also um, probably acknowledge Sandra, who will be retiring. Yes, yeah. definitely. Oh my God, yes. Okay. But I'm wondering, should we should we make a statement about how we've re kind of reorganized our town governance government government? That's sort of part of the town report, isn't it? Except that at that point we we had not appointed a road foreman. We did say that Kari was road commissioner, but now we've decided Kari's also going to be treasurer and have an assistant. Mm -hmm. So we could update it a little bit. It seems like we ought to just say something about that. Yeah. And I can do that. Um, I think you can do it off the top, maybe after you get guests. Mm -hmm. And you can refer people to the, the chart. organizational chart that's on the back of their down report. Yeah. The only other thing I would just say to all of you is that um, sometimes I view town meeting as a time for everybody to have their say. And I found sometimes your predecessors felt like, and this is sometimes true, that they had all the wisdom and they would often jump into the debate before they were called upon. And I, that's just a, you know, Sometimes people are asking a question that they really want you to answer, and sometimes people ask a question to make a point. And so, just I know, and we'll just feel our way through that. But, but sometimes I had to tell your predecessors, you need to wait a minute. Okay, so would you like us to ask to be recognized? Um, I think that that's, that's good, and I will try to recognize you unless I think. Really, somebody was just making a point, and yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And you will have mics. Will be mics. There will be one mic. There's usually one mic at the table. So and you're not going to have just roving mics. Okay. There will be roving. I assume they're going to be row two, at least two mics for the people. Yeah, Barbara set yeah. that up. Yes, yes, there will be roving mics, the same mic runners have done in the last several years. Great. We're still doing it this year, and the mics have had take one. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It looks like there's a hand up. Oh, oh no, that's the, that's the, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> um, what about the Australian ballot items? Is there an opportunity to speak to those or is that, or not? Um, 
know, I think uh, I haven't looked at them. The first one that doesn't matter so much, 20, but 21 might come up. There might be questions about the zoning regs. So 22, I would, I would guess that we would benefit from saying a few words about why that, that's a good idea. Um, I think you can probably do that right at the beginning with the town report article. Um, and so um, I think you're not supposed to election year okay. during town meeting. So probably um, in terms of the seats that are being voted on for Australian ballot, we're not supposed to okay. be campaigning. But I think it's I, I think you're now allowed, you used to not be allowed to discuss anything on Australian ballot, and you are now allowed, for instance, to talk about a bond if we had a bond on okay. So, so if, if you introduce me as road commissioner and I say a few words about what the focus is, I could slip in that, by the way, we're proposing, you know, put the, this bond for a new grader, and here's the reasons why. Good. And, and if people want to talk about um, land use and development regulations, I suppose they, I assume that's going to be mentioned in the town report, and people could ask questions then or ask questions under other business? They should ask questions on the informational meeting. I Personally, we've had five hearings for yeah. this thing, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Jerry, it didn't work there and didn't ask the question, no more. <laughs> okay, but if somebody asks a question, we're going to call on you to answer. <laughs> so. Yeah, I'll do my son, son. <laughs> Somebody moved into town who missed all five of those hearings and they're showing up for their first town meeting, so try to be patient. <laughs> That's all I can you say. do know we <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, 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 I said somebody knew. Somebody who's been to all five of your hearings and was already irritated yes. you. I'm not going to tell you to be patient. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So I have some other, uh, we're, we're probably done with the warning. I want to talk about the informational hearing, um, the budget message. Do, you don't need to stay for those, I think. Um, not, not unless you want me to. Or if you have any feedback for me about how you, have, if I've done something that you guys don't like in being your moderator, tell me now, or tell me between now and tell me okay. something we've made a change. No, we all think you're perfect. <laughs> and I'm not. I promise. And I'm sure I'll get something wrong. Well, Marianne directed me to get you home by 8 o'clock because she's got dinner rating. Yeah, well, so. I'll take a whole time. <laughs> Did she say what's for dinner? <laughs> she did say it was going to be candlelight. She didn't tell me why. <laughs> Um, does anybody have any other questions, comments, things you want? So you, you will move to approve this and then sign it? Oh, shall we do that right now? Please. <laughs> okay, I'll take a motion to approve the warning as presented. Moved. And sign it. Okay, I'll Anne second. has moved it. And Donnie seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thanks. Oh, and then we're going to continue talking, but I don't. I think we can let you go home. Okay, well, thank you for what all of you were doing. I know you had way more to do this year than you signed up for when you ran a year ago. <laughs> thank you. For that. Thank you. I did. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, guys. See you in a few weeks. <clears throat> Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. All right, let's see what's next. The informational hearing. I think we kind of have a, a, a plan. I mean, we're going to be presenting the budget and Australian ballot um, items. Mm -hmm. But I think the only Australian ballot we need to budget, Australian ballot item we need to present is the grader. Is that right, Kari? I don't think right, we need to actually required. present. Right, that's required. That's one of those. Because um, it's a, it a bond. Because it's a bond. So we're going to need people to speak to the budget and um, somebody to speak to the grader at that hearing on the 26th. Um, now, I've been thinking about how we're going to do the budget at the informational hearing. And uh, I think we're going to do the highlights at the 
um, town meeting, but I think we should probably be sure that each of us takes a piece of a budget and knows it really, really well, so that if questions come, we can field them. And I was hoping, I, I did send you all out an email, but I, I apologize, I didn't even get thinking about this till this morning, in which I um, took all the different budget items. Did any of you see that and suggested a breakdown? So I made copies because I suspected many of you wouldn't see it. And I have some more if anybody else wants to see it. Okay. Sure. And what I did was first, I just went through and took all the topics in the budget, you know, the ones in bold. So that there's the select board budget, the town clerk budget. Those are all listed in the order that they appear. And then I tried to break them into groups that I thought made sense for somebody, different people to um, become really good at. Like, and you can see that I, I made six groups. Uh, they could have been done a different way, obviously, but I just was trying to make something up to get a handle on it. You have a comment, Kari? Were there seven? There's seven. There's seven. Oh, capital spending. Sorry, there's seven, yes. I was thinking it might make sense for somebody to ta who takes volunteers and committees to maybe also be the social services, I mean the services person. Maybe the person who takes running the town office also does town buildings and equipment. One person does salaries and benefits. We got a person doing, I broke, well, we got highways and then we've got capital spending. There, but if you can think of different ways to organize it, that's fine. And maybe you don't want to um, pull it apart that much tonight. Maybe you want some time to think about it. But if you like this idea. <laughs> I think you broke it up. I think mm -hmm. it's a reasonable separation. Okay. I'm just um, speaking for myself, salaries and benefits, I would be comfortable. Highways, I could be comfortable. Um, some of these things I probably would not be good at. <laughs> <laughs> well, wh whichever one you take, you might have to do a little homework. Oh, no, I'd be doing homework regardless, but uh, staff, I think. Right. I, you know. Like whoever does running the town office might want to sit down with some of the staff for a bit and just make sure they understand all the different items. Um, salaries and benefits, that's, yeah, okay. Uh, committees, that's probably, we, we've got that one because they all came in and talked mm -hmm. to us. Highways, uh, that's got to be somebody, not me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and capital spending. What? I don't know. Jamie, do you like this and do you have a something you'd like to noodle on? Um, I'm flexible. I generally like the categories. I feel like I could um, take a stab at um, I forget exactly which ones you link together, but well, um, some combination of volunteers, committees, town office, or town buildings and equipment. Although it seems like buildings and equipment and highway might go. Oh, I was actually linking running the town office with the town buildings and equipment oh, yeah. because they that kind of made sense to me. And volunteers, I linked with. Um, the services, the police, yeah. the library, and stuff like that. But it can be done a different way. <laughs> I'm flexible. Anne, were you saying you wanted the volunteers and committees? Did I hear that? Um, I, I think that I would have be capacity good. to be intelligently ish <laughs> on like the highways or like the salaries and benefits because I'm like behind living wages and you know mm -hmm. I mean I think I can speak well to those those two different areas, I don't want them both, but I'm just saying as far as things that I could speak to. Mm -hmm. And that would also be um, talking about the new structure a little bit yes. too, as mm -hmm. we did that whole thing. Um, Donnie, what, you got anything you wanna work on there? Um, I mean, what's left running the town office and the services well, and the capital, capital spending. spending. Debt, all the debt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like the spend. I like the spend. <laughs> 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 
Well, you can certainly talk about, I mean, you probably may have the best knowledge of all of us of what all the equipment is and how, we're, how we've set up the capital budget so that we keep things running well. I, I suspect you're the best person to speak about that, but. Sure, I'm fine with that. So if you did that, and in should we start with you on highways? What does that leave Jordan doing maybe salaries? Well, you're doing, what are you doing? Highways. I do highways, but we can probably combo it some up with the capital spending. And so Jamie, that out. leaves you and me well, oh, you're splitting saying the other four. Well, no, and I don't care. Do you have a preference? And, but there'd be overlaps we'll talk and... Mm. I was gonna say, I would... No strong preference. Oh, I can do I volunteers and committees too. and services. Okay. Yeah. Good. Right you do those and I'll do the other two. No, I'm doing this. I think she's playing as a in there. Oh, okay. I was going to say, I would do salaries and benefits as well. Either or. Well, we didn't leave anything for Jordan there. I was thinking ah. that would be a good one for him. And what are you doing? I will do running the town office and the town buildings and equipment. Okay. Does that make sense? Let's let's try that. We can talk. We can revisit when you, we've had a chance to think at the next meeting, and then showtime will be the meeting after that. And now, what kind of length of time do you have a general idea of how much you want people to go on about their section? Well, um, the idea was not to have anybody go on about their sections. The idea was to be ready to field the questions. Ah, field the questions. Okay. 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 Better. And so part of your job as you prepare for this will be to think about what questions might come winging out at you. Oh, yes. Oh, boy, you um, can spend a lot of time. Maybe we, could, maybe we could do that together. We could create a Google Doc mm -hmm. and for each of these sections, we could um, just suggest questions. And then if, um, some, if, we look, if we look at them before the next select board meeting, if someone doesn't know how to answer it, and that we would be a good opportunity to yeah. come up oh, with I like that, sorry. Thank yeah. you. So I'll, I'll put that together. Please, okay. yeah, great. Thank you. And we'll see if anybody comes. <laughs> 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 yeah. She said, well, if anybody comes. <laughs> she said, we'll see if anybody comes. <laughs> okay. um, so at that meeting, then, we'll just uh, we'll present the budget a little bit. Let, we'll just uh, give the overview and then field questions, and then we'll talk about the grader. That's all we're going to do at that informational hearing on the 26th. And Donnie's going to talk about the grader. Sure. I think you sent that the last two weeks ago. The, the proposed, information about the grader? Yes. Yeah. I can, I can put together some bullets for you, and then you can go from there. Sure. Just let me know if you need more. Okay. We have a plan. Anything else on that? Then let's go on to the budget message. What about, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, that, that's right. Yeah. That, um, Kari and I were ready to print, but you guys wanted to look at it. <laughs> 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 now you've had your shot. Make your comments. <laughs> Anybody? Oh, I sent an email to that I thought it looked fine. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to read it. I think Jamie, Jamie sounds like she's got something to think about. To no, talk about. I don't. I was racking my brain, but I don't think there was. I think I thought you did a great job. Well, <laughs> it was a it was a, it was a, a, it, a week or more that I read long? it ago. Is it... Um, I didn't think it went on. No, I, I think you it hit all the. The key points, and I, I thought it was fairly really pithy, actually. Does this stand alone as a front porch forum post? Barbara, it's not, I don't know. You said 5,000 characters. Characters, not words. Right. So, uh, I don't uh, know how to, I'm not going to count letters. Yeah, Does anybody know I, how to do it? You can do it in words. words. Can I, I, I personally think that that's probably not too long for a front porch forum post, but. Yeah. Once we try to post it, we'll find, they'll let us know if we're running short. It's 4,132 characters. Yeah, we made it. Oh, but, you, you, you got a character counter, not just a word? Oh, perfect. But um, I guess more my question is, without having the budget, 
to look at. They can go to the website. That's the, what the first sentence says. But is is does it do anything if for you if you're not looking at the budget? If it's just a, I don't know, without the, that context. Well, it talks about priorities, which I think people will want to hear and explains what the increase is. That's what most people do anyway. They go right to the bottom line, right? What's, my, what's going to do to my tax rate? So I think it gives them the information to get them thinking about it. Yeah, and it serves as an announcement that the budget is posted for them to look at and that we're going to have an informational hearing. So that's all in the first paragraph. Mm -hmm. And then if they keep reading, they'll get more information. If they keep reading, they get more detail. Mm -hmm. And people who no, want to go good. through it line by line can go look at it. Is it on the website yet? I'm no. going to, you, you sent it to Tegan, right? Tegan, Tegan's, you were going to send it to Tegan, and Tegan was going to post it as of last Thursday. It, it's yes. on my list for tomorrow, I think. Oh, okay. I just want to make sure everything got yet. approved. As, as soon as Kari gets it to Tegan, it, we'll Tegan get it will get it on the website. Hey. And she, she's online if you want to unmute her. I, don't, I think she can unmute. I need to unmute. You're hearing me. Wow. We can hear you. I think Barbara just wanted to confirm. You haven't posted it yet, have you, Tegan? No, I have not. I was waiting for you all to finish. Yeah, OK. Thank uh, you. I might just be missing it skimming, but I don't see in the beginning where it says specifically where to find the budget. So it's the first should, sentence. You should have a URL there. Once Tegan actually posts it, Kari, then get it to the URL, <laughs> URL <laughs> on the form post. Sure. And then I, I, I don't have this memo it. in front of me, but if it's going to be on front porch form at the very end, maybe just say questions, call or email, and put your email address and yeah. the phone okay. number where you would want people to call if they have questions. Okay, I'll do that. Um, so, and you probably printed an older draft. I added a sentence on Friday Okay. That's, that reads, the select board's <laughs> proposed budget for fiscal year 2025 Thank you, Corey. is now available on the town website. In the town meeting section, we'll put an actual URL there. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's happened before. <laughs> um, yeah. Thank you. I think this is just delightful. Okay. I think, I, I appreciate having a story and an explanation like if you just said go look at the budget yourself you know am i really going to take the time to go line by line you know right. of course i did but you know most people <laughs> 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 but i think most people i think appreciate like you telling us a story yeah, yeah. right you know so i appreciate this Good. i like this budget message Good. Anything else on that? I think, oh, so Kari, you'll post it in uh, Front Porch Forum. <clears throat> sure, or unless you'd rather. <coughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> Who, who's up for getting the questions? <clears throat> that's, yeah, that's, that's what you just posted. <laughs> oh, all right. Do you want me to post it then? No, no, I'm, I'm happy to do it. I'm just. <laughs> Mr. Treasurer. It's, um, yeah, it's fine. I'll do it. Okay, thanks. The other related thing, an idea we bounced around, I think at the last meeting, was if we're also going to post it in all the places we post agendas. And yeah. if we're doing that, we theoretically could post a copy, a physical copy of the budget with it. I have mixed feelings. <laughs> How would you feelings. put that on I'm a just... bulletin board? I mean, we post them on bulletin boards. Right. I mean, in Maple Corner, they're typically on the counter. You could yeah. do that. Yeah. But I mean, we get a hanging budget at the post office. But how many people how many are going to stand there and right. flip on my little easel? <laughs> I mean, I'd have to go inside. It's cold out there. <laughs> no, we have one on the inside. Isn't that like, or is it the town report that? The, the, it, no, it's the voter information. Oh, the voter information right. is what we have hanging in there. OK. Yeah. When will they be getting their select board, I mean, their town meeting reports? They are scheduled to be mailed February the 14th. Okay. Yeah, so they'll, they will have those. Should I include that in that piece yeah, of information? Yeah, I'm wondering. 
Or is that just understood that it comes in mid-February? Include this memo? Include that date. The, the, the mailing date is on the 14th, and you can expect to see yeah, it. I, 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 I would have to see that. I, I would have, I would, you're asking that in context for me. I don't know. I, I think that. A lot of people will always say, well, where is it when I don't get it? I mean, you mail could, is mail. right? But you could say something like, "The budget's available now online, yes. and you'll, you know, we'll expect to receive your town report, your town report yeah. Yeah. you know, okay. by the third week of February or whatever." A little bit vague. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. Um, so, what are we going to do at the posting sites? By the way, we've um, worked out with Jess at the Callis store that she's going to have a bulletin board devoted just to town announcements. And, and because we are doing that for the East Callis General Store, we're offering it to the Maple Corner Store and the Adamac Co op. And Maple Corner Community Store has taken us up on the offer. Oh, you've already done it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, think it, I think it's a great idea. Um, yeah, and I like the idea of. It being a designated bulletin board with a the same sort of sign at the top of each yeah. one at each yeah. door. Town notices. Yeah. Well, yeah. No, technically the one around tucked in the post office was for the town. That little one on the other side of the parcel locker. I don't know how many oh, people ever. I never knew that. No, we were talking about Barbara's gonna make a little sign from the mm. tops okay. of the bulletin boards that say town notices. Oh, okay. And hopefully we'll train people to go and look at the right. bulletin boards. So I want to go back to the last question that I thought Corey was asking me, but I misunderstood. You were asking about putting town report information in this message. Yeah. But then it makes me ask the question, should this message be in the town report? <laughs> no, I think it serves a different function. I think it's the late January notification that the budget's now available, and here's how you can learn about it. OK, but if it's explaining a budget increase, is there a benefit to this message being no, in the town already, report? That, that, that that's much of that message report. is already in the town report. Yeah. Okay. In, in the select board report. Okay. Yeah. So, anything else on that one? Okay. Let's. I think we have a plan. Did I forget anything? So, Kari, you're going to post it, and that's really <laughs> all we're going to do. Okay. So. Um, Kari suggested we have a budget process debrief. What worked well? How could the process be improved? <coughs> I thought about it. I thought we did great. <laughs> Kari, did you have some things you wanted to tell us? Well, I, I came in mid midterm and um, seemed to go okay. I missed I missed the first you know when the commissions came. I think and presented. I didn't see much of that. Clearly, the fire department, the East Montpelier Fire Department, is the place where that was just confusing, I think, and frustrating. So I already have it in my calendar to prompt them ahead of time. Well, and they had major turnover, and so all the guys <coughs> doing it now were not privy to how it was done in the past. So they were, yeah, really kind of yeah. feeling it out in the dark yeah. this year. Yeah, we're hopefully we smell it that. Yeah. it. It felt like that meeting last week. It, ideally, in my mind, we would have avoided an extra meeting like that to finalize right. things. And so, like county tax and what was it, the, the, the interest payment um, on the piece of those are the kinds of things I'll know better in the future. Right. Um, I don't know. I mean, when, when I don't really have a good context for this kind of budget. Well, the process was we, we, um, we broke it into groups that we wanted to hear from every week, starting sometime in the fall. And they would come in, like Jan came in and presented the, uh, the planning commission budget and so on. And that, so we spent, what, two months about gathering information, just gathering all that. And then you came in about the time we had it all gathered. And it was our time to go through line by line and make some of those difficult decisions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That seemed to work well. I don't know what else we would have done, really. Right. I think it worked well. I think, from my understanding of previous years, it's been more done in, like, we were able to fit in short presentations in each of our regular meetings over the course of a longer period of time, which seems better to me than 
you know, some previous years where there's been very specific budget meetings, extra meetings. I think we did a good job of not having a lot of extra meetings. As a contributor to that, I would agree with that. I mean, it, uh, why would that have been better for you? I mean, why do you care whether you went on a Saturday morning or? I felt in the previous ones that, ah, you need to come and do whatever. And I think you got to get done in a hurry because they were compressed for time. Whereas here, you gave us an opportunity to explain better in a in, I think it's a much more comfortable way uh, in order to do that. Yeah, Barbara. So if I can speak for the treasurer, the current treasurer, um, I think, first of all, I think you guys did an amazing job. I thought your, your plan and your layout was ideal and agreed starting early with those interviews with each committee was awesome. Uh, here at the end, though, it, the budget was about three or four weeks later than anticipated, and that created a lot of stress for Sandra because once it's finished, she has days and days and days and days of work that she has to then create all these Excel spreadsheets that go to the graphic designer. So that's been very stressful for Sandra that it came in so late. So I will just say on behalf of the next treasurer, you might want to try to not let it go so late. So why did it go so much later? We had hoped, I mean, our schedule had it coming sooner. Help me remember, why did we not, were we unable to meet that schedule? Well, there were still a few items that were undetermined, including East Montpelier. We just had that meeting on. That's what I thought. It, it, didn't it more have to do with things that were out of our control? But why does that not happen in other years then? I'm not saying it didn't. For the first three months of this, you guys were way ahead of schedule. But that last month, it all caught up to where it's ended with previous select boards. Yeah, there's not a lot we can do if they don't give us the county tax yeah. and East Montpelier Fire Department doesn't even give us a budget. Until yeah, no, I'm not really saying we're yeah. the fingers. I'm just sharing yeah. that at the end, when you think it's done, then the treasurer on the back end of all your work has to do all this work to get all those pages and pages and pages and pages and pages of Excel spreadsheets ready for the graphic designer. Yeah, and that's something, it's both fire departments, I know when I reached out to them, very early on told me, well, we don't do our budgets, did tell X time, and this is how it's always been done, and this is when we present it, and this is when we approve it. Which yeah, that's what the county the tax end people end. say. Yeah. Sorry, we're not doing ours till December, so you'll hear about it in late December. I, I don't know what we can do about that. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Yeah, Rose. Um, I, again, want to reiterate what Barbara said, that I think you did a great job, and from you know, my years of experience um, at these meetings, I can recall that we used to meet once a week starting in October, and um, once a week, and then closer to December, we used to meet twice a week. And so if whatever week Christmas was on, like this year it was on Monday, we would have met like Tuesday or Wednesday, you know, um, and so I really want to just say I really liked your process. I really liked your style. Um, I think you did really just overall a good job. And I think one of the things that might have dragged it on at the very end was once you plugged in all the numbers, you realized that it was such a big increase, percentage increase. Like, wasn't it like 13% or something? Yeah, that was yeah. the first So you had yeah. to like just keep going back and just sharpen your pencils and sharpen your pencil. Um, and so I think that that was part of it. But I think um, mm -hmm. you did great by not having to meet once a week. So, mm -hmm. I, you know, but I just think all in all, I think you all really worked well, um, you reached out to the commissions, and um, mm -hmm. I want to thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay. Anything else on that? Okay. Ah, that's why you guys are still here. Select board role and development of a town, a new town plan. I'm sorry you had to stay so long for that. Um, th that was just something I wanted to talk a little bit about. Um, it just, we've had a heck of a year. We have worked really, really hard. Um, but I, th 
and what we've accomplished is we have created a new governance structure that seems to be working pretty well. And the town seems to be running pretty well without us being there all the time, having to respond to things as they come up, as we had to for a good chunk of this year. That's kind of what we did for the first many months. Given that, I think it's, this is an opportunity for us now to step back and think about, so what is our role with the town? If, if the staff, our amazing staff, can handle all the day-to-day -day stuff, and we don't need to be so heavily involved anymore, what is it we should be doing? I mean, we could just be sort of responding, you know, managing the budget and responding to requests for money. But I, I tend to think we ought to be thinking a little bit about managing the town, um, setting priorities. What, what kinds of things should the town be putting its energies into? We have, as we all know now, a huge uh, a number of volunteers and commissions and committees all doing things to help us run the town. But nobody's coordinating the work of all of them. So I'm starting to think of the select board role as being the, the place where we really set the major town priorities with a lot of input from our commissions and committees. And then make sure that they're all being coordinated so that the Conservation Commission and whatever other, you know, the historic preservation and so on, that they all understand what these priorities are and we're all working together towards them. And I, so I just wanted to have a conversation about that because we have a great opportunity. The Planning Commission is about to do a new town plan. These are redone every five years. So this is going to be, oh, it's eight years now? Oh, okay. With, a, with an update after four, is that right? Uh, if required. So this is a this is an opportunity. This when are you planning to, to how long do you expect this process to take? <laughs> Nine months, ten months. Yeah. Okay. I mean, to do it well. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Be about a year. A little. You may, I think you'll, if you can get it to the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission by November and yeah. have them approve it in December within 2024. So yeah, but that's. You're asking the planning commission to work a lot. <laughs> well, the state actually is making you do that, aren't they? <laughs> In any case, um, I see this as an opportunity for us to work together, these two commissions, the, the commission and the board, and maybe the conservation commission, I'm not sure yet. You guys already work well with them. I understand that. But uh, depending on where we go, to really think hard about what the town priorities should be, to really um, you know, have some meetings with, with townspeople and try to get a sense of what the town would like to see as priorities mm -hmm. for the next five or six or eight years. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to have a discussion about that and think about how we might have input into, the, into this town planning that's about to happen. And Jan, do you want to say anything about that? Or, or John? Um, or would you rather just hear us talk right now, for a bit? I think, I, I, think, um, I think there should, well, I'm not sure about the word should, but it, it would be nice to have alignment. But um, I think, first off, I was shocked that the select board would want to work with the Planning Commission because that didn't happen before, okay? <laughs> um, and so um, we would look forward to, I think, working uh, with you. The, the thing I would, recommend that we all re recognize is that by statute I think there's nine items that we have to write on um, as we we're working through our first uh, town-wide meeting on the 18th if we if we use the uh, post-it note uh, brainstorming I call it brainstorming he calls it flower showering or whatever it is that it's, it's now uh, each, each, what, nine, we have nine items. Each of those nine have three top priorities. And out of the 27, you've got three priorities on nine things. Out of the total 27 priorities, the Planning Commission's got to pick, find ten, nine or 10 that are gonna be worked on for the next eight years. 
Now that's a big thing. I mean, it, so it's important that if people will please come to these whatever meetings that we have, and the first one's February 18th. And, and I think it's important that the select board be there because maybe you know, you're gonna have whatever else you want and you're gonna put your own little sticky on it. That's, you're a citizen and you're also part of the select board, so. You're talking about the planning, the, the town-wide planning meetings. The, the list, yeah. What you call yeah. the listening se session? Well, we, yeah, I mean, initially, I mean, uh, we, some of us are comfortable doing a loosey-goosey, but no, we're, we're, <laughs> the, we're the, the whole point today of finding out that we have the post-it note things, and we do, and the three colors, one, two, three priority, you know, type of thing. So. We're, we're laying the groundwork, and mm -hmm. fortunately, we, the Planning Commission's got another meeting on February 6th before all of this, so finalize it. So I kind of dropped this on you, but... Uh, uh, I, I, mean, I, I fully concur with what you said. Like, I know personally for myself, being on the select board is not necessarily because I love the minutia of budgeting, um, but it's a broader vision of, of how the town can function and run and meet the needs of everybody in town. Um, and I know as soon as I saw the announcement about the February 18th meeting, um, it went right on my calendar because I'm excited to participate and whether that's as a as any other citizen or if we as a select board decide to have some more specific role, um, I know I'm excited to, to be a part of that process. I think to give you some kind of uh, question, John and I were just having a discussion tonight. What would it take if, uh, why do we have a historic district? What would it take to get rid of the historic district, make that all a new village, and make that an area where you're going to build affordable housing? It's a big, wide plan. Oh my gosh, Jan! That's Those are the kinds of questions to put out to people. Yeah, people are going to react, but. Trying to drive we have no other place. Oh my God, I know he's coming down here right now. We have, we have no other Grow. Every every other. I know. Well, no, it that's in river corridor floodplain. Yeah, no, okay. that's a dark matter because that's always a thing. Everyone's like, well, don't these tallest village. It's like we can't put anybody else there. We don't have the water system. So, so, so yeah. I mean, so I mean, those are the what if questions um, that some of us have thought about. Um, mm -hmm. The other main one that I, I have always liked is and people don't realize. Um, that your revenue for operating the town comes from the properties. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How many properties are they willing to increase in the next 10 years? Yep. Yeah. 10, 25, 30, 35, 50, 100, who knows? Mm -hmm. And if they say no, okay, then this means what in terms of budget? And people have mm -hmm. got to start understanding the interrelationship between mm -hmm. that, and they don't. Yeah, I do. So would that also include things because I, these are things that I don't have a solid grounding on. But I know I've talked with several residents about the idea of, you know, someone who has a, not a humongous plot of land, but to do tiny homes, like a little clutch of tiny homes in an area where there could be, you know, a shared water, shared septic. Um, I mean, is that something that we can do or, or do we have to change we can do it in the village. Yeah, for sure. so that's another what if question. Yeah, what if. So, and, and these are things you would pose on the 18th and ask people to yeah. talk about. That, well, at least that's my idea. I've got to talk to yeah. you a little bit mm -hmm. about that. But yeah, yeah it's, it, you use your questions to begin the discussion. And then after an hour of discussion or whatever, let's do the post it note things. What do you want for a priority? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then go yeah. from there. Well, no, and I think it's an important discussion to have because I certainly hear more and more people in our community that are feeling like they've got to go, like they're not going to be able to stay, they're not going to be able to afford it, they've been right. here, they're deeply involved in the community, they're volunteers, they're, you know, it would be a great loss, you know, 
But I think the sad fact is that on the, on the tax issue, so unfortunately, so much goes to the schools. Mm -hmm. And so when 75 or more percent of your tax bill is for the schools, you know, you have to tell people that only 25% of your tax bill is going to the city, mm -hmm. to the town. Mm -hmm. um, and so that whole issue about the school it has to be directed through the state legislature. How are you going to change funding schools? Okay, so I, I, I actually want to discuss process, right? <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, these are all discussions that we want to have, and the question is, how do we have them? Should we just have a joint meeting sometime of the two boards? Should we come? John said yes. <laughs> is that I what? Think that's a good idea. Yeah. I mean, we could do that. Should we do it before the 18th? Should we go to the 18th and then have a meeting with them afterwards? Um, it might be wise. Just ideas. Just to see what the, what the general public says, and then we have something. Well, here's a suggestion. Um, isn't the next select board meeting the one that the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission person is coming to? Yes, and you guys should know this. Um, so an say, invite to the Planning Commission to come and hear the speaker, and then afterwards okay. maybe a continuation of this. Like, are there more ideas about how we can work together? Yeah, Sam Lash from Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission is going to come and talk to us uh, about pots of monies that might be available for projects in town, um, particularly things like climate resilience. But I did ask her to talk about affordable housing. I mentioned sewer, for example. She said, yeah, I think there is money for sewer, and she promised she'd talk about that. So if you had some particular things you wanted her to address, um, let me know, and I'll, I'll ask her to talk about those. But when she, is she coming? She's, I think uh, she's on the next meeting, isn't, wasn't she, Kari? February 12, is that the date? Yeah, I think that's our next meeting. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure. All right. Then, then, then we can put it in our next meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, here it is. I haven't set up a time for that yet, but I'm thinking she should probably be right at the beginning of the meeting so we can have a good discussion about it. Can you um, email me something about that so I can make that on the agenda for yeah. this planning meeting then? Yeah. Okay. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. We're holding a, a, Sorry, a community wide meeting with that. And we specifically wanted to hear Callis as opposed to Adam at Maple Corner and East Callis. <laughs> um, and we decided to do it on a Sunday because there's a lot of us people that um, don't like driving at night. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be happy to know that we had a townsperson show up on January 18th, ready to go. Really? Yeah. yeah. Like, I've already got changed to 1 o'clock, 3 o'clock. <laughs> and finally, Kari realized he was a month early. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty enthusiastic. <laughs> Who is this person? It was Tobin. It was Tobin. Oh, oh, nice. uh, oh, 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 oh my God. I'll have to buy him a sandwich or something. <laughs> <laughs> Um, any more, you, anybody, if any other ideas or thoughts that you want to express about this? So where we are is you'll come to our next meeting at least, and we'll, we can have a conversation then, although it won't be so much about the priorities. Mm -hmm. And then we'll come on the 18th. I hope most of us will try to come to that. It would be a really good thing to participate in. And then maybe we should try to get together shortly after that. After that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wait, it went on the 18th. One o'clock here. One to, One to three. Here. If we are making it hybrid, but I was asking Kari how would we do uh, right. post it notes <laughs> on Zoom. I'm not sure. And he people, said people can talk in the chat. Yeah. Can, oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. The chat there's, chat, there's chat box. So, so, so the planning commission will be warning the 18th, right? Yeah. If does if more than three of you, or, or if three or more of you are there, does the select board also need to warn it? Not if no, we're not so. doing any select board business. Yeah. They're we going can. as citizens. Yeah. 
Well, well, I don't know. Well, I, well no, I mean, none, none of us can speak for the select board without getting everybody else to, right. no, see, to agree. It, 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 I don't even know if we have to warn a, a, a meeting that we're asking for for information. Yeah, so yeah. we are warning. It's a public hearing information. On the, yeah. uh, and it isn't, I don't know. But if, if we had hired somebody to come in and facilitate a meeting, I don't know if we'd have to do the warning. But anyway. We should just warn it. Oh, we'll yeah. warn it. Um, yeah. We'll warn it. Um, my understanding of joint warning would be if you're holding joint meetings. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but this is their meeting, and Jared is going to uh, facilitate. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Thank you for that discussion. Um, I'm excited. I'm glad you're excited. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> Tegan, do you have anything you want to report to us? Um. Uh, it's more of the same. Uh, Barbara and I are mailing out our first presidential primary ballots tomorrow. So that's that's gearing up. Um, the school district has the voter checklist, and but they can't mail anything out until they have their ballots and we have our ballots. So that won't happen until February. Uh, we finished up the dog licensing year with our software and we're starting the next year. Um, I'm sure there's something else I could think of if I sat here long enough, but that's, that's most of it is uh, Barbara has been working her tail off on the town report. We've been reading it line by line, looking for typos, looking for spelling errors, looking for any sorts of little mistakes. Um, so that is slow, but very rewarding when we find things. Our graphic designer has been doing a wonderful job. He's been prompt. He's been a great communicator. Uh, he's been a great choice. I'm so glad that we found him. Um, yeah, Barbara, do you have anything to add as news from the town office? No, I don't think so. It's okay. busy. It's busy, busy at the town office. It's a busy time. Yeah. Yep. All right. Thank you, Tegan. Kari, you have anything to add? Yeah, so I wanted to update, Anne heard a little bit of this, but um, you know, the model that we're working on for San, post Sanders retirement is that I will be appointed the treasurer and then you approved an assistant treasurer job description. We don't have any applicants with the necessary qualifications and that's got me to thinking that I really need to learn the mechanics of that job. Um, one, just because that's what's going to be needed. Two, I'm going to need to know it anyway to um, train and oversee the person in the future. And, and thirdly, I also want to, I mean, I, I don't really know what model will work best. I don't know. We're thinking about 20 hours. That's what we put in the budget for the assistant treasurer. But it may be something different than that. I'm not really sure. And I won't be able to know until I know that job better. So. Um, so I'd really like to devote a good chunk of time in the coming months to learning the Nemeric, which is the accounting software system. Um, I think it's going to be a combination of Sandra will teach me certain parts of it, and then Wendy Wilton. I don't know if you know Wendy. She served as a treasurer last year for the town. She works for Nemeric, so she's an expert in the software. She can teach me other components of it. Um, and, um, and you know, they, they both say the same thing as. Let, let us just get through January because they're working on the reports and, and all the things, you know, tax prep and all that, all those things. Um, but then I basically want to put a, together a calendar to, to and devote a substantial amount of time, which I want to make sure you're comfortable with because time spent on that means not time not available for other things. But I do think it's a it's an investment that's going to need to be made eventually. Yeah. Yeah. And. Um, Toby, let me know that um, we got approved for the very first FEMA reimbursement today or oh, yesterday. Hey. It's for the Curtis Pond Dam, which was the one emergency item, so it had to go first. Oh, I thought it was the Moscow Woods. That, that one hasn't been approved? Theoretically, that will be next because that was submitted next, but we had to submit the, the dam first because oh, wow. it was an emergency. And they, the and they approved it. It's worked its way through. We don't, we don't have to check. But it's worked right. its way through all the various. So elements. the whole thirty thousand that we paid for the pump and everything. What? Well, the, the the seventy five percent of 
I, so, I, I, yeah. I don't even know the. Uh, and the state will though. give us more on top of that. Is that right? Yes, in theory. Um, Toby attended a training. I, I missed it, but um, I, we know what we need to do to apply for the state portion, which is an additional 12% or more, depending on how things should go. So. Great. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Jamie, you got anything to report? Not a whole lot. Things keep oh, man. plugging away. It's one delay after another. Um, I think um, there's still, you know, pieces of this memo of an uh, MOA between the town and the Historic Preservation and the Army Corps of Engineers. Um, has been a document that's been in flux and highly negotiated over the last three months. Um, I was hoping to have the final draft to present tonight and we yet again had another delay. Um, but hopefully by the next meeting, I think it's three weeks till the next meeting, so I'm sure we'll have it by then. Um, the, I've been uh, playing phone tag a little bit with the, um, trying to connect with the woman who's in charge of the um, rec, rec, state recreation grant that we applied for, for $500,000. Mm -hmm. uh, my current tack is hoping to get some information out of them about specifically when will we know and see if we can edge, like I really want to explain to them the situation. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that if it's a reimbursable grant, I think that there's some folks who would help us front if we knew that was a sure bet. Um, but we need to know more about that grant process before. Because if we got that money, it would definitely be a goal. <clears throat> yes, right? yes. yes. Yeah. So, and without that money, it's super touch and go. Yeah. Um, and, and when you have its large donor conversations are hard when you have a pot of potential pot of money sitting there. Um, so I'm sort of threading that line. Um, but I, I, the, I haven't met with this woman yet, so I can't say firsthand. The folks who submitted the grant and have worked with her feel optimistic. Um, we're a very good fit for the grant, and um, we're just the type of project they like to fund. So, um, and Larry's staying with us. Here. Here. Yes, thus far, thus far, Larry is okay. sticking with it. He and Michael of DNK have still been going back and forth on some of the finer points, um, but. So far, everything's still aligning and hopefully on track, but there's moving pieces out of our control. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jordan isn't here. Is I, anything on the shed no. situation? Nothing further? I, Nothing I have open. something. Mm -hmm. I, I open have, session? Having, I don't know. It has to do with no. the border. Through. Quests. Nope, we don't talk about that. Yeah, that yeah. would that would be. So if we can go to into executive session. session, and then I can talk to you about that afterwards. But that's been a constant. Yeah. So, is it worth going into executive session tonight, or should uh, we say I that? think so. I would like to because I I think okay. I, we need to do something. And okay. I just want to make sure I'm doing well. The then right first, thing. before we do that, let me make sure. Is there anything else? Anybody? I will be here at the next meeting. Okay. Are you going to go do something fun? I'll be away where it's warmer, I hope. Oh, nice. Uh -oh. <laughs> Just going to down Williamsburg, Virginia for a couple of weeks. Oh, that's nice. 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 Good. Visit my Karen. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, oh, what's that? Hi. I will. <clears throat> um, Kari, are you comfortable taking minutes and participating this way? So you could do that next time? Or take, take notes at the next meeting? Yeah, because yeah, Rose won't be here. Okay. I'll do my best. <laughs> By the way, I appreciated, I appreciated your comments on the fire department meeting, Rose. Yeah, Thank that was you. Helpful. 
I was yeah. their administrative assistant for six years. Yeah, it showed. It showed. You clearly knew what was going on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. With that, um, uh, let's take a motion to go into executive session for the purpose of um, discussing pending or probable civil lit litigation under 1 VSA section 313A1E. So moved. A second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. And Rose, you can just say we went into executive session and do the oh, usual. Yeah.